So how is a person duly elected as president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria? I refer you to two major sections of the 1999 Constitution as amended, section 133 and section 134. Now let's start with section 133. A candidate for election to the office of president shall be deemed to have been duly elected to such office where being the only candidate nominated for the election, he has a majority of yes votes over no votes and he has not less than one quarter of all the votes cast at the election in each of at least two thirds of the states of the 36 states of the Federation and the Federal Capital Territory. So let me break this down for you. The 1999 Constitution describes three scenarios for the presidential election, where there is only one candidate, where there are only two candidates, and where there are more than two candidates. But in all three cases, the Constitution is clear and unequivocal about this. The winner must have majority of yes votes over no votes, and then among those yes votes, he must score at least one quarter of all the votes cast in at least 24 states of the Federation. Now, a lot of people were shocked in 2015, uh, the presidential election, before uh, the final votes were announced. I think we were still waiting for votes from Gombe State. That's one of the states in the north. And when the then president, Goodluck Jonathan, quickly called then-candidate of the All Progressives Congress, Muhammad Buhari, to concede the election to him and saying that he recognized that Buhari had won that election. Now, people who didn't understand uh, the provisions of the Constitution were really angry. The supporters of then-president Jonathan were angry with him for conceding the election before all the votes were in. But he was standing on good information and, and good advice. Looking at the provisions of the Constitution, it was obvious that President Buhari had managed to score at least one quarter of the votes in 24 states of the Federation. Now, breaking down these maths, let me explain how that happened. So, say for instance, a candidate is from Kano State and he wins majority of the yes votes in Kano State in the presidential election. All President Buhari needed to do was get at least a quarter of the votes in Kano to still win the presidential election. So what that means is if a person wins a million votes in one state and the other person wins 250,000 votes in that state, he's still a contender for the presidential seat. If at the end of the election, and all the votes are tallied from all the 34 states, the fact that he was able to score at least a quarter or 250,000 votes in the states where he was considered to be weak would also help with the votes he got from the states that he won outright. The thinking of the Constitution in doing that, it seems a little bit complicated, but the idea is also the same idea that uh, the United States built on with its ele electoral college. The political system recognizes that some groups have the numbers. If you depend only on numbers, the groups with the largest numbers will always win the election. Let me repeat that. Some ethnic groups have the numbers. If the Constitution does not design this system where there will be a spread across 24 states of 36, two-thirds of the Federation, there is a risk that whoever emerges president will be president of a region rather than president of a nation. The idea is that the president must be acceptable to the majority of Nigerians from the majority number of states. So, 
no matter how many numbers any ethnic group has, an ethnic group cannot by itself vote a man in to be president. They will need the support and the votes of other ethnic groups. That is what we call reaching out across the aisle. One group cannot make a president without working with other ethnic groups. And anyone who is serious about becoming president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria must recognize this. And what this means, in effect, is that even if all the 19 states of the North decide to vote for a Northern candidate, that candidate cannot be president unless he makes inroads into at least five states of the South. That was why three times current President Muhammad Buhari tried to be president in spite of his immense popularity in the North and with the number of voters voting for him in the North. He was unable to make the presidential seat without making inroads into the South. And that was why the formation of the All Progressives Congress was the key to getting him elected in 2015. With that party, he was able to make inroads into the South-South, into the Southeast, and into the Southwest, getting at least a quarter of the votes in these critical states, thereby giving him that platform that the Constitution wished, a president of all Nigerians, not a president of the North. That provision of the, of the Constitution is key, section 133 and section 134. I enjoin all Nigerians to read that provision very well. So, in conclusion, what are we saying? That the federal character principle enshrined in the Constitution is what has given Philip to this requirement. The Constitution recognizes the number of ethnic groups, recognizes the number of languages spoken in the country, and recognizes our differences. But our strength lies in those differences and the numbers. And any Nigerian who wants to be president must be able to work with all ethnic groups regardless of the language they speak and the states they're from. I'm Angela Jutmobi. See you next time.